Uh, we're joined by Steve R. Pachenik, whose uh, revelations this week have prompted one of the biggest reactions we've ever had from a guest. Um, the listeners have been completely blown away with what they've heard. Steve Pachenik, of course, Deputy Assistant Secretary under three different administrations, also worked uh, in the Reagan and Bush senior administrations, top spy master, terrorist hunter for the U.S. government, wrote the book on psychological warfare and counterterrorism for the State Department, and of course dropped the bombshell this week on the Alex Jones show that Osama bin Laden has been dead for the best part of a decade since late 2001. Dr. Pachenik, great to have you back on the show today. Oh, it's always a pleasure, and uh, I want to thank you and, and Alex Jones for bringing me on. I want to thank the audience for listening to me. It's very kind of them, and uh, again, uh, this is something that uh, we go back over a decade. It's very rare to have a host like Alex Jones who had the bravery to bring me on 10 years ago, right after 9-11, when I pronounced not only was 9-11 a false flag and stand-down operation, which most Americans now realize, but at the same time, part of the whole scenario of the PSYOPs war that was created by Bush Jr. and before that Clinton, quite frankly, because he was involved, uh, was the fact that Osama bin Laden had been diagnosed with Marfan syndrome. Many of your people can look it up. It's called M-A-R-F-A-N, where the lifespan is very short. And one of the consequences is arterial uh, fracture and, and, and all kinds of side effects, but primarily renal dialysis with a very short lifespan, and Alex talked about it yesterday. And at the time that 9-11 occurred, uh, he was eminently dying, and then by the time Tora Bora came in, he was already dead. So when I went on the air uh, nine, ten years ago, and, I, and Alex was kind enough to invite me, I said, look, uh, uh, Osama bin Laden is dead. Uh, the issue of why we used Osama bin Laden is basically a story narrative that the intelligence community, usually the CIA and, and uh, civilians, not often the military, although uh, the military is literally uh, separated out at this point. Many of my own men I work with in special forces, not the Navy, but in the Army particularly, in the Army intelligence I uh, have really been watching this, and, and I must admit that we have I have full respect for our military. I myself was a colonel at 32 and refused promotion at 39, but my point being that there was a narrative that was developed in order for the United States to go into a so-called war on terrorism, which is an oxymoron because terrorism is not a war. It's a tactic. It's not a strategy. And that narrative was carried forth with all kinds of storylines that made no sense, including Osama bin Laden was supposed to be the bad guy, and that's why we went in there and we would pursue him and continue the war in Iraq and Afghanistan for reasons that were unclear to everybody except that we were killing al-Qaeda members, but it turned out that the al-Qaeda members we were killing were the people we trained in the beginning when I was involved in the Carter administration under Brzezinski and then followed through in various other administrations. They came out, some of them from special forces, others from other uh, divisions of uh, the military, and were trained in Brooklyn and elsewhere, and then were put in as Mushahadeen, as most of the Americans know. And then eventually the storyline went, uh, as the Bush administration created with the neocons, Paul Wolfowitz in particular, Azami Khalasad, Elliot Abrams, Condoleezza Rice, Richard Cheney, all of the what would eventually be turning criminals and liars, as we found out, that there was no weapons of mass destruction. And suddenly, not only did we have one uh, villain, Osama bin Laden, who already been dead in this narrative. And we'll out, talk about it after the break. Stay there. We'll be right back with Steve R. Pachenik. We're talking to Steve R. Pachenik, top spy master, works under five U.S. administrations. Um, Dr. Pachenik, I was talking um, in the last half hour to the former Assistant Treasury Secretary under Reagan, Paul Craig Roberts, and uh, he was, uh, of course, fascinated by the statement you made earlier this week, um, the fact that he, a top general under Wolfowitz told you directly that 9-11 was a false flag and that you were prepared to go in front of a federal committee to reveal that name. Um, Roberts was wanting to know how you're not concerned about your safety while withholding that kind of explosive information. So can you elaborate on that for us? 
be happy to explain it. Number one, uh, it, most of the people who are involved in the false flag and stand down understand what it is I really did over 20 to 30 years. Uh, I was what you call a solo operator and worked all over the world. I didn't work for the CIA. I worked directly for the president or the secretary of state, and I did regime change. So that gentleman and others understand what I do, and I won't go into detail, and, and, and they don't really have to go into understanding how I do it, but they do understand every one of the neocons knows me exceedingly well. And remember, I had, well, you should know, we, uh, I had worked with Cheney and Rumsfeld before under the Nixon administration. I didn't personally know them, and, and Rumsfeld was at the Rand Corporation, but I had worked with all the neocons, and they weren't allowed under the Bush senior administration. So the issue of my safety is not really the issue. I'm just like any other American citizen who, who served our country, and I said, you know, it's enough. I was colonel at 32. I was promoted to brigadier at 37 or 39. I refused that. I didn't go in full time. I went out to become what every American citizen is, is an entrepreneur and basically wanted to live my life as I wanted to and make the mistakes that I could and criticize the administration while being able to serve it. And I volunteer still to serve our military, and I'm very proud of that. Uh, I won't go into the details, and I don't ask for money, and I never have, and I don't receive a pension. But it's a very clear understanding that your American public should understand that if somebody doesn't step forward, I'm no more a hero than in a mechanic, a truck driver, or anyone else, and I'm saying, this is enough. And I don't worry for my life. My life has been at risk serving my country, I don't know, eight, nine different times from the Middle East to the East Asia to Cambodia with the Khmer Rouge, with the uh, Red Brigade, with uh, PFLP. And so I think those who know what I'm saying understand that this could be a mutual assured destruction if anything really happened to me. And it would really not be very good for anyone to consider even thinking about uh, terminating me because it's not an issue. I mean, it's, I don't need to threaten anybody. Everybody understands in the business what I do and what I've done. And it would be best for everybody just to cool it and allow an American citizen to say exactly what he wants to say, to criticize a president who's not qualified to really be in this position at this point in time, who has maintained a narrative that's totally deceptive, false, a lie, and basically... Uh, the issue is, you know, those who are involved in this deception and in 9-11, they're not going to get away with it. That They have to understand that the American public will not allow the unresolved issues of 9-11 to go away, as you've seen even a decade later, thanks to people like yourself and Alex Jones and the wonderful, wonderful people who are listening to this, the radio broadcast. I don't see myself as any particular hero or whether there's a death threat. That's fine. I mean, I do what I do without the, the concept that they're going to kill me or I'm going to uh, disappear. And that's unfortunate for most people because I feel like the Jeffersonian doctrine, which is every generation has to fight for their own democracy. So I'm blessed to be in a country where at the same time I can serve Nixon, Reagan, Bush, Ford, Carter, and, and Bush Sr., who I admire immensely, and at the same time be able to criticize his son, who I thought was totally incompetent and totally dangerous, Bush Jr. And now I see that there's a uh, sequel to that, and that is Obama. It doesn't matter to me whether you're Republican, Democrat, Independent, or any other uh, spectrum of, of the policy, but you cannot, I repeat, you cannot continue to have a PSYOPs operation on the American public that wants to justify the increased popularity and self-aggrandizement of a president like either Bush Jr. or Obama, and he uses that to manipulate the public without telling the truth and then gets confab and can confabulate stories about an attack where a man was already dead and had a confrontation which never existed and an intelligence community that backed it up and knows fully well that they have deceived and lied to the American public. It's important that your audience understand, at this present point, terrorism has become such a big business. It, there, we have over 850,000 people involved around the Washington area in the military-industrial complex making uh, in top-secret relations, which is absurd. 
We have TSA that has really never done anything to prevent or uh, protract uh, uh, safety. And what's important to understand in this point right now for the public, we have been safe for over 30 to 40 years. Nothing and no one has ever attacked the United States. The only people who attacked the United States was George Bush, Cheney, and Rumsfeld. So the nonsense that since 9-11 we have been safe is an absolute lie. It's a continuous lie, and those who believe it are continuously deceiving the American public. If anything else, it has become worse. We've exacerbated our relationship with the Pakistani government, the Pakistani military, which I have worked with under Yahoo Khan, and they're very through intelligence operatives who can have the access or have the access that I've had, including with the fundamentalist, Islamic fundamentalist who went to school with me. And at the same time, we have become an increasingly police state, which is exacerbating our economy, our, 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 the fact that we are going down in our living standards, the fact that people have to have double jobs. There are no jobs available. And this president, all he cares about is garnering a billion dollars to reelect himself in another narrative, which was totally delusional. So the problem now isn't about me. I'm not more a hero than any American who says, look, this is enough. I'm not going to take this anymore. But I didn't expect 10 years later for another uh, delusionary uh, uh, panderer called a president, a politician, whether you're Republican or Democrat, to continue this nonsensical story that we have been attacked by Muslims, which we hadn't been. We were attacked by our own people in a, in a false flag operation. And the point of the Osama bin Laden resurrection is this is the psychological resurrection. If, it is, if the SEALs attacked anything, then they're going to have to uh, explain to me, who's been in intelligence for a long time and works with special forces, not the SEALs primarily, how they attacked a mortuary, you know, because he's dead. And he was dead for nine to ten years, and there are others who can confirm that. The issue at hand now is still more important. We have to stop this government and other governments from continuing to deceive, deny, and continuously manipulate the American public. That's why Alex Jones is so important in your radio show. They can call us conspirators. I don't care. You know, that's, that's an incredible, easy way for the intelligence community, which is not very effective, by the way. And let me give you another little statistic. 80% of the CIA now are composed of, op, of mercenaries. In the days that I worked under Reagan, Bush, and Bush Sr. in particular, we had real heroes, men who had really served our countries and worked on the Cold War. They weren't interesting in self-aggrandizement. They weren't interesting in promoting SEAL 6. No special forces unit that I have worked with, including Delta and other units in hostage negotiation, in the Army particularly, has ever come forth and said how great I am, and let me show you how great I am. It is unfortunate that the Navy has a proclivity, including under Admiral Mullen, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, whose father happens to have been a publicist for my talent agency, William Morris, and has a proclivity for self-aggrandizement because he made a real faux pas by giving the Medal of Honor to Greg Mortensen, another sociopath who claimed he went into Pakistan and built schools all over, he has a proclivity to dramatize a unit that has had a questionable history of effectiveness, the SEALs. When I was involved under Reagan, the SEALs were lost on a raft, six of them, four to six of them, on, a, on an assault to Grenada. Now, you explain that to me, but every movie I have seen and your public has ever seen aggrandizes and self-aggrandizes the SEAL unit, including Demi Moore's film, G.I. Jane, and other films. But the units I worked with and had in, and, 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 and a consult to, you will never know about. They are dedicated, quiet men and women who have been intellectually exceedingly uh, perceptive, very highly trained, and their job is to do their job, keep it quiet, and go home. And we're talking about great generals like General Petraeus and other generals who really have served our country. But you don't hear them going out and uh, creating this fantasy of how they went in there and attacked a man who was armed but wasn't armed, who is dead but isn't dead, but now is floating in the water. So I warn the Navy, and particularly the chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff, the best he can do, Mullen, is to resign now. 
and the same thing with Panetta. You're not qualified to run the CIA or the military, Secretary of Defense. And I warn the President of the United States, cease and desist this nonsensical story and stop calling the American people conspirator and marginalizing us by telling us what he wants to hear. Because the truth of the matter is the more he says things that are absurd and contradictory, the more he's going to expose himself to people like myself and others about his own questionable background. I'm not talking about his birther. He knows he has a very questionable history, and he's treading on very dangerous waters when you come into the world of PSYOP, in a world where guys like me and others who I work with are really professional. I don't go out in public. I don't need to have my picture taken. I don't need to have a uniform, and I don't have to be interviewed every 30 seconds to say how great I am. Like this okay, we'll be back to talk more about it after the break with Dr. Steve Pachenik. Don't go away. This is the Alex Jones Show Live. Live on the Alex Jones Show, May 5th, 2011. Talking to Dr. Steve Pachenik, who has been completely vindicated. Uh, the Situation Room photos were staged. Obama and Hillary did not watch the Bin Laden raid. Obama lied Sunday night on national television when he told Americans that he did. Um, I want to get your take on that, Steve. And also, we don't have much time, just one more question. Uh, on Sunday, Obama said America was safer because of this staged Bin Laden fable. Uh, they've ramped up the, the police state. They're put, talking about putting the terror level up a notch. How much danger are we in of them staging another false flag inside America within the next few weeks? Well, I don't want to say they're going to create a false flag, but what he's done is exactly... When you lie, you continuously lie. So he will lie to create... In order to maintain this lie, he will increase what looks like the presence of counter-terrorist people, TSA and cops and all. But the reality, the only thing that's effective in terrorism and counter-terrorism over 30 years is human intelligence, and he doesn't have that. And the CIA doesn't have that because 80% of them on contract... The ones who have it are on the military, usually the Army, some elements of the Air Force. So I'm not worried. If they pulled another false flag, we're going to have a revolution in America. And he knows that. He will understand that. The intelligence community will understand that. That will precipitate violence in this country. And I warn the intelligence community that's listening now and the military, do not even think of creating another false flag because that will be the beginning of a second American revolution. That will be the beginning where really the American public that is allowed to have guns will really understand that this country is out of control. So now I am warning the President of the United States, who is not the brightest individual in the world and who is also not very competent in his job, that if you want to get reelected, you best get reelected by understanding what the office is. It's to serve the public. It's not to serve your own grandeur and your own narcissism. It's to serve the American public. And by increasing the so-called security, you're creating more and more trouble. You've created more trouble by men and women, our honorable men and women who've gone and fought and died for this nonsense so that you can get reelected. Our veterans coming back without any benefits because you are not able to supply them. And you cannot get reelected on the bodies of the American people and on their welfare. So I warn you repeatedly, if you think I'm and I, I am just... Full of air, you better look at my history again on regime change. It will be very easy to initiate a regime change with you, Mr. President, and everyone around the intelligence community. If you want to come forth, I'll be happy to discuss it with you. But I believe the president, number one, is too cowardly, number two, not too bright, and his lying will be the undoing of his presidency. And Dr. Dr. Pachenik, about these staged photos, I mean, you said they were staged. Now it's come out that they were. What do you have to say about that? Well, you know, being right is not good in my life uh, because I'm a physician. If I tell you you have cancer, it's not, I don't, I'm not proud to say that you have cancer. Believe me, I have no great satisfaction in saying nine years later that the American public has been duped again. But I'm warning those who are creating this story, including the intelligence community, the 850,000 people involved in counterterrorism, beware of what you do. You will be held accountable. The American public will hold you accountable. There are myself and others who understand exactly who you are, what you are doing. Do not 
mess with the American public, and that's my warning. There will be more deceptions, more lies, but if you increase your TSA, you increase your security, you will weaken the fibers of our democracy, and that will begin the second American Revolution. And if they don't understand that, they better look at what happened to the neocons, to, uh, to Scooter Libby, and to many others. So you better understand, once again, I have not given you a false threat. I am threatening you again on behalf of the Americans. As an American, do not play with American security, freedom, and the right to protest. That will be the demise of your institution. And Obama, you can, cannot keep lying. Your lying will undo this presidency and will undo the fabric of our society. So be careful. Your sociopathy got you to the presidency, but will not keep you in the presidency. Dr. Steve Koenig, we're out of time. Uh, we've got to leave it there. We're out of time. Really appreciate you spending time with us, and uh, we'll be sure to have you back on the show. There goes Dr. Steve Pachenik with more astounding revelations on the Alex Jones Show, and I'm sure that he'll be back on the air very shortly.